All right, you guys, we are now going to be tackling example three. And again, we're trying to show that the triangles are congruent by showing that all three angles and all three sides are congruent. Which in this figure, we're, we're looking at the top triangle in this picture and the bottom triangle in this picture. So this line is dividing this parallelogram into two little triangles. So I want to show that these two bad boys right here are congruent. And I must show this by doing, um, or that, sorry, I must do this by showing all three sides and all three angles are congruent. So let's see, I hope we can, because it's really sad when the triangles are congruent. So I hope I can show that they're all congruent. Okay, so let's see what is already marked in my picture as congruent sides. I have several congruent sides marked in my picture, and I do apologize, you guys. The demon cats got me, like, really bad, and if you see, like, I had a whiteout a lot. So just kind of ignore the whiteout and just try to focus on the picture. Um, but anyways... So in my picture, currently, I know that PQ has one tick mark. Do you see another side that has one tick mark? <gasps> Holy hot dog, that would be segment RS. It also has this tick mark. Now, this little arrow thingy we'll address in a little bit. So just ignore the arrows right now. So I have one tick mark on PQ and RS, which means they are congruent. So I'm going to say PQ is congruent to RS. And the reason why I know is because it was given to me. Okay, do you guys spot any other sides that are congruent in my picture? <gasps> Holy hot dog, I see them too, guys. It'd be segments R to the P is congruent to segment Q to the S. And also, since these were marked in my picture, why do you guys think these are congruent? What is my reason? Well, it was given to me, so my reason would be because it was given to me, the given. All right, guys, I'm so close to showing that all three sides are congruent, but currently, I'm missing my third side. Now, there's nothing marked in my picture, which is unfortunate, so I'm going to have to use one of those tricks up my sleeves to show that this middle line, which is in the top triangle, and the bottom triangle, I need to show that that third side is congruent. It's a shared side. So I'm going to say, well, RQ is in the top triangle, and it's the only side I don't have marked congruent, as well as my bottom triangle side RQ is also not marked as congruent. All right, so RQ is congruent to RQ. Now, this is a shared side. Do you guys remember what is that nifty trick up your sleeve that you can use when you have a shared side or when something is congruent to itself? It's kind of like this is like a little mirror right here, and the RQ is looking at itself in the mirror. What is it called when you see yourself in like a mirror, glass, or water? <gasps> a reflection. So when something is congruent to itself or when something is equal to itself, this is called the reflexive property reflexive property all right you guys i have shown that three sides are now congruent bam 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 so i got my three sides so i'm well on my way to showing they're congruent and now i need to show that my angles are congruent so let's see what is already marked in my picture as congruent so I do see this angle and this angle both contain one little arc, which means they're congruent. Now, I cannot call this angle R, and the reason why is because angle R has got a lot going on. If you see, it has more than one angle there. So if you ever have an angle that has more than one angle attached to it, you have to name it with three letters. Okay, which the way I do that, I just kind of trace the angle and name it as I see it. Okay, so this is like angle P to the R to the Q. So angle PRQ is congruent to angle R to the Q to the S. So RQS. And since it was already marked in my picture, the reason would be the given. You're right, it is given to me. So I got one angle down. Check. One angle. I still got two more though. So let's see, let's see. Well, do you guys spot any other angles in your picture that are already marked in as congruent? <gasps> I do see another one. Whoa. 
Both of these angles have two arcs, which means they are congruent. So I can say angle P is congruent to angle S also because it was given to me. And these I can call by one letter because angle P is the only angle there. And angle S only has one angle going on. So I can call each of these angles by their vertex point. Okay, so I'm so close. I got my second angle. Check. All right, I'm so close to proving triangles are congruent, but I'm currently missing my third angle. Now, what is that trick up our sleeve that I taught you about that shows if two angles in a triangle are congruent, the final or third angle will have to be congruent? Do you remember that, that postulate or theorem that says the third angles in the triangle have to be congruent if the other two are congruent. <gasps> you guys are so smart. They would be congruent because, actually there's two reasons why, because of the third angle theorem. So that's one reason why I know that these two have to be congruent. Okay, now another reason for why those have to be congruent is because, you guys see these little arrows right here? Do you remember what those little nifty arrows mean if you see them in your picture? It means that these two segments are parallel. So you have to think back to those nifty parallel line properties that we talked about um, to see if you spot any of those angles that are congruent. So here are my two parallel lines. This is my transversal. When I trace over my two parallel lines and my transversal, what letter appears? <gasps> Do you guys see the Z? What type of angle forms the Z? Correct, you guys. They are alternate interior angles. And if I know lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So that's another reason why those two angles are congruent. So you can either use the third angle theorem or you can use the um, alternate interior angle theorem. Whatever floats your boat. Okay, so again, when I name these angles, there's a lot of angles going on at Q and R. So I can't call them Q and R, so I'm going to kind of trace them. So PQR, angle P to the Q to the R, is congruent to angle S to the R to the Q. And the reason why, again, there's two reasons. The third angle theorem. Also, you could say it's because of the alternate interior angle theorem. Sorry guys, I didn't leave enough room in my chart, but it's okay. Alternate interior angle theorem is the other reason. Alternate interior angle theorem. So yes, I have now shown that three sides and three angles in my triangle are now congruent. So that means my triangles are congruent, and that means I can now write my triangle congruency statement, yay. So remember, you guys, when you're writing your triangle congruency statement, it's very important that you write things so that your corresponding angles and sides line up in your statement. Okay, so that is very important. We must write this in a very specific order. Okay, so how would you name that top triangle? When you name a triangle, you name it by its vertex points. So I can name it in lots of ways. So how would you name it? Yeah, I think, I think that's a good way to name it. I agree. That's a great way. I'm going to name this thing RPQ. So triangle RPQ is congruent to triangle. Okay, so again, when I do this, I kind of look to see what the markings are on either the sides or the angle as I trace it. So if I look at RPQ, RPQ, angle R has one little um, arc. P is 2 and Q is 3. So R, P, Q. Okay, so this has like one line. If it helps you to number, this one has two little arcs and this one has three. So I need to trace my triangle that has one arc, two arc, to three arcs. Okay, so let's see here. Which one has one? So Q starts with the one arc. Okay, then I go to two arcs. So two arcs is at S. And then I need three arcs, which is at R. So this tells me the corresponding angles and sides, which again, you can kind of see like PQ is in spot two and three, as well as S and R or RS. All right, RP is in one and two, as well as QS. 
And our Q is in spot 1, 3, as well as our Q is also 1, 3. So if you see, they all line up, which is really nice. And guess what, you guys? We have now proven our triangle is congruent. And that was so exciting. I'm going to add a happy face because that was great. Way to go, you guys. I'm so proud of you.